Good evening. Today we have a look at the key findings from the 2023 to 2024 thematic review conducted by the Dubai Financial Services Authority, or DFSA. This review focuses on firm disclosures and their compliance with financial promotions rules. The DFSA undertook this thematic review to evaluate how well authorized firms adhere to financial promotion rules, accurately represent their regulatory status, and distinguish responsibilities between group entities. This review also aimed to identify both good and poor practices among firms. So, what was the purpose of the review? Well, the purpose of the review was clear, to ensure firms are compliant with financial promotion rules. This included making sure that their regulatory status is accurately represented and there is a clear distinction of responsibilities between group entities. The DFSA wanted to see where firms excelled and where there was room for improvement. Now, how did the DFSA go about this review? It was a three-phase approach. Desk-based review, they evaluated websites of 386 authorized firms to check if the scope of their DFSA licenses was clearly and accurately represented. Survey. A survey was sent out to 38 authorized firms with different business models, focusing on those offering structured products, restricted speculative investments, RSIs, and those that have a retail endorsement. Questions were asked on their financial promotions, governance, systems, and controls. Senior management meetings, finally, meetings were held with senior management of some of the firms, for a more detailed analysis. Let's now talk about the key findings from this review. 1. Financial Promotions Requirements Many firms showed a good understanding of the financial promotions rules through the quality of their marketing materials and related policies and procedures. However, some firms had policies that merely restated the COB and GEN requirements, making them generic in nature and not tailored to their specific business models, which can lead to misinterpretations and noncompliance. 2. Approval and Ongoing Monitoring of Financial Promotions it was observed that all firms in the sample produced and approved their financial promotions internally, which is a positive sign of internal control. Nevertheless, some firms needed to enhance their ongoing monitoring processes to ensure continuous compliance. Some authorized firms maintained a register of all their marketing materials in circulation, including whether they were live or not, their distribution channels, target audience, and the dates of approval, issue, and most recent periodic review. This practice is considered effective for maintaining an adequate record of marketing materials and ensuring they remain current and compliant with regulatory requirements. 3. Marketing material for professional clients. A significant issue was that many firms did not clearly indicate that certain marketing materials were intended for professional clients only. This lack of clarity can lead to these materials being misinterpreted by retail clients. One possible way to comply is to have a disclaimer on the website that states that the information is addressed to professional clients only and or is provided only for the use of professional clients or market counterparties and cannot be relied upon by retail clients. 4. Disclosures in Marketing Materials Some authorized firms reference past performance in their marketing materials without providing balanced, easy-to-understand information or adequate risk warnings about past performances. This omission can mislead clients about the potential risks associated with financial products, thus making them non-compliant with the rules, COB 3.2.1 and 3.2.6. Authorized firms must make sure that any marketing or communications related to RSIs have a clear risk warning. This warning should be near the top of every page of related communication, so that it is easy to read and understand. In some cases, it was noted that authorized firms used vague or short words without giving more information, like stating restricted speculative investments or using the acronym RSI. Such methods do not meet regulatory requirements because they do not give retail clients enough information that they can easily understand. 5. Scope of Services A major finding was that many authorized firms did not clearly distinguish between the services offered by the DIFC entity and those of their group entities on their websites and there was no clear indication that the group had a presence in the DIFC nor was there a mention of the authorized firm's name, address, and regulatory status. Additionally, some firms misrepresented the scope of their DFSA license, which could mislead clients about the firm's capabilities and regulatory oversight. The DFSA mandates clear differentiation between DIFC and group entities, specifying services, jurisdictions covered, and client types targeted. Good practices observed include separate entity pages, specific DIFC entity websites, and clear service listings by location and client type. 6. Disclosure of regulatory status and contact details. Surprisingly, some authorized firms failed to include their regulatory status or contact details as required. 
This is a fundamental requirement to ensure transparency and regulatory compliance. Thus, authorized firms should ensure that their regulatory status is disclosed in all marketing materials communicated to clients or potential clients. 7. Use of DFSA's logo. A few authorized firms use the DFSA's logo without permission, which is a clear violation of the DFSA's rules. Unauthorized use of the logo can mislead clients about the level of endorsement or oversight by the DFSA. Firms should ensure that they obtain express written permission from the DFSA prior to the use of the logo. So, what does the DFSA expect from authorized firms moving forward? Firms are expected to review and enhance their marketing materials, policies, procedures, systems, and controls to ensure full compliance with DFSA rules. They should also document any actions taken and be prepared to provide evidence of these actions during future DFSA engagements. In conclusion, the DFSA's thematic review has highlighted some critical areas where firms need to step up their game. Compliance isn't just about ticking boxes, it's about maintaining transparency, ensuring accuracy, and protecting client interests. Authorized firms must continuously ensure their communications are clear, fair, and non-misleading, and that they accurately represent their regulatory status and provide appropriate disclosures. That's all for today's episode. I hope you found this breakdown of the DFSA's 2023-2024 thematic review insightful. Stay tuned for more updates and in-depth analyses in our upcoming episodes.